going anywhere. Congressman Adam Smith joins us now. Welcome, Congressman. Good morning. Welcome, Congressman. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Um, your reaction to this breaking news from Senator Manchin? Well, I think it just shows the building momentum that Joe Biden needs to step aside at this point, that it's time for a different nominee. And I just really hope that, that the president and his team heed those calls and see the reality of where we're at. I think the Republican convention, sh convention showed us two things. One, that they are, they're going to be a formidable force. Um, they are, but it is incredibly important that we defeat them. All right. President, former President Trump's speech was unhinged and dangerous. We, we can't let that come back. We have to have the strongest possible team to stand up to that very clear threat to the future of this country, and we have to do it as soon as possible. The president right now, President Biden, is not in a position, I feel, to strongly deliver that message, as we saw in the debate, and frankly, we've seen since then. So I'm hoping that his campaign team heeds this, understands how important this moment is, and makes the right decision. I, I agree with Senator Manchin's assessment. So, so Congressman, if that's the case, who who then are you backing for the to be the nominee of the Democratic Party? I'm backing Kamala Harris. I think she is clearly the strongest candidate that we have on the stage right now from her time as vice president, and particularly in the last couple of years. Look, vice president's not an easy gig. Um, trying to figure out you know, what your role is um, when you're in an incredibly important role, but you have no defined responsibilities. But she figured it out, particularly on choice on women's health care. She's been an incredibly strong voice, but also on national security and foreign policy. I go to the Munich Security Conference every year. It is Vice President Harris who has been the spokesperson for the administration at that event for the last three years. And she has delivered a very strong message on the importance of protecting Ukraine, on NATO, on the role that the U.S. should play on the world, and, are bringing, and on bringing our allies together. So I'm supporting Kamala Harris, but look, the delegates will decide. We have a process, it's not complicated. I'm confident that Vice President Harris will get their support and be nominated, and she certainly has my support. Um, Congressman, as, as I'm sure you know, uh, most of the reporting showing that the Trump campaign would prefer to run against President Biden, thinking that any sort of change in course adds a variable to this race. I want you to take a listen to what Donald Trump um, was asking a crowd about who they would like him to run against. This is um, from Michigan last night. Who would you like to most run against if you're us, if we want to win? Ready? Kamala Harris, Crooked Joe Biden. All right. I don't think we have to go too much further. So I tee up this sound, Congressman, not because I delight in ever playing Donald Trump sound, but because I think it helps illustrate some of the frustration from Democrats who are unhappy with the fact that this is unfolding so publicly, that believe there is a process for this, that this could have been done behind closed doors, that there could have been a pressure campaign that did not crack into the open the way that this has. Yeah. As See, someone who totally has been out untrue. there publicly, speak, speak, well, yeah. please, though, speak, right. speak, speak to that, to yeah. that critique. Certainly. Look, the debate happened, and the second Joe Biden walked off that debate stage, there was only one thing that should have happened. It was very clear at that point that he was no longer physically capable of carrying this campaign the degree that it needs to be. I called up the White House the day after the debate, and I said, look, he's got to step aside. We had a conversation about it. I didn't hear anything for days. Six days after that, I called up somebody higher up in the White House had the same conversation. And it became very clear to me about 10 days after this that the president and his team decided that they weren't even going to have the conversation. It was like, nothing to see here, we're fine. You know, we're running and everyone else is just gonna have to live with it, all right? So those private conversations were happening. If nobody had ever gone public, there's no way the president would ever consider getting out. They were not giving it the serious consideration that it deserved, despite numerous behind the scenes, private, private conversations. Now, it just, in our constituents, look, we're, we're public officials. 
when our constituents come up to us and ask after that debate and after some of the other performances since the debate that we're not very effective, when they come up to us and ask, so do you think the president's up for this? What are we supposed to do? Why? Okay, you know, did, did roll, and that's what happened with some some people who didn't want to go public. You know, it's not a great image for any political official to be running away from cameras. Okay, I've seen <laughs> I've seen two people running away from cameras in the last year. I won't tell you who the second one was, but I saw George Santos running out of the house. Okay, it's you guys have been there. You've been on the hill. And what do you think of a member who just ducks away and doesn't answer a question? Okay, the only people that force this to go public. Of the Biden campaign by not making the right decision after that debate. And again, I waited 11 days, 11 days and numerous conversations with White House people and campaign people who blew me off and blew everybody else off and said, leave us alone. We're running. That's it. So, Congressman, I I have talked to a lot of DNC delegates um, who uh, and and chairs of the caucuses who were upset about how they feel as though members of Congress who are um, super delegates who do not have a vote on the first ballot, who are not the ones that makes this, that make the decisions, um, essentially got together themselves to come out and call on the president to step out of the race and didn't check with. Party members didn't check with the base. So, what do you say to those folks? Because I hear that I hear your point about you don't feel as though the campaign was responsive to the comments after the debate. Which, frankly, you know, I used to work there. They, I don't, I don't know any campaign that will be responsive to after a bad debate night. So folks saying you need to consider dropping out of the race. That's just like unheard of. But so is the situation we're currently in. And so, why do the members of Congress know better than the the voting so delegates of the Democratic National that. Committee? and then some of the voters because I, I hear there are voters that have questions about Biden's age and then there are voters that say look I think he's old but if it's him or Trump I'll vote for him yeah well first of all go back and watch all 90 minutes of that debate I, I, I sat came, through it sir I, I saw it it was it was it was a bad debate we don't need to debate the no, no, debate oh no the debate oh sucked. no 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 I've seen bad debates I've seen a lot of bad debates I have never in my life seen anything like that a person so clearly physically incapable of making the arguments that need to be made so if you're right i heard you just let me get this out if you're right okay if in fact no campaign would ever consider the president stepping aside put yourself in my situation after that, that debate i believe that the future of the republic depends on donald trump not getting back in the white house and i just saw a candidate who is incapable of stopping that from happening. So your argument is, because he was the candidate, well, of course he's not going to consider stepping aside. No candidate would ever consider stepping aside. And I feel in my heart and in my soul that he has to, for the sake of our ability to win. What are we going to do? Are we going to go, ah, eh. I'm going to go watch a baseball game. I just want to be clear, sir. That wasn't my question. My question was, no, 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 sir. No, Congressman, you didn't point. get to my first point. I want to be really clear, I'm though. Getting because to we're getting to it not right now. Right the now, DNC let me get members. to it. Yes, okay. Let me get to it, okay? Well, I know open. a lot of delegates, okay? I see them. I encounter them. I had conversations with them. And I had a number of, forget delegates, Democrats, grassroots Democrats. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. Oh, my goodness, sir. I didn't, I didn't say I'm anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. You had that look like, I, I, try, I try not to I cut off. The look, I had the look like so I, I didn't apologize. say anything. Let me just get yes, the point okay. out. So I, 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 I'm so sympathetic to that point. And they were begging me, we can't do this. We have to be Trump. He's not up for it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay. Yes, delegates have a position of responsibility. But I have a position of responsibility as well. Okay. And if, the, if your point is, as members of Congress, our answer to what is happening in the, in the Biden campaign, not just in the debate, but come on, before the debate. People have seen him in situations where he wasn't up to the task that he should have been up to since the debate. And if as a member of Congress, you're telling me that what I should have said was, hey, I got nothing to do with this. Delegates are going to call. I'm out. I hope they figure it out. I'm sorry that that is not my understanding of my responsibility to my constituents and my country. Congressman Adam Smith of Washington with a passionate defense of his position. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Thanks. Still ahead, folks, principal deputy campaign manager of the Biden campaign.